The shoulder joint. The shoulder joint, also known as the glenohumeral joint, is a multi-axial ball and socket joint in which the head of the humerus, which forms one third of a sphere, articulates with the glenoid cavity of the scapula. It is a very flexible joint due to the fact that the socket or glenoid cavity is very shallow, hence allowing more range of movement at the articulation also making it less stable. Articular surfaces Head of the humerus represents the ball and the glenoid cavity of the scapula represents the socket. Ligaments Fibrous capsule The medial attachment is the margin of the glenoid cavity outside the labrum also enclosing the tendon of the long head of the biceps brachii. Lateral attachment is the anatomical neck of the humerus except inferiorly where it extends further downwards. The fibrous capsule is supported by the rotator cuff muscles. Synovial membrane. It lines the inner surface of the capsule and forms a tubular sheath around the tendon of the biceps brachii. It communicates with the subscapular and infraspinatus bursae. Glenohumeral ligament. Three fibrous bands are derived from the thickening of the capsule anteriorly, superior, middle, and inferior. Glenoid labrum. It is a fibrocartilaginous rim attached to the margin of the glenoid cavity except above. The labrum deepens the fossa and forms a cushion for the head of the humerus. Coracohumeral ligament. It extends from the coracoid process of the scapula to the anatomical neck of the humerus between the greater and lesser tubercles. Transverse humeral ligament. It connects the two lips of the upper part of the intertubercular sulcus on the humerus. Stability of the joint. This fibrous capsule by itself is too thin and weak to keep the humeral head in the glenoid cavity, so other structures help maintain the stability. Anteriorly, it is maintained by glenohumeral ligaments as they reinforce the anterior aspect of the fibrous capsule, hence prevent anterior dislocation. Superiorly, it is maintained by coracohumeral ligaments as they help reinforce the superior aspect of the fibrous capsule, hence prevent superior dislocation. Tendon of biceps brachii, coracoacromial arch, Four rotator cuff muscles and their tendons help keep the head of the humerus in the glenoid cavity. Glenoid labrum deepens the socket, hence prevents skidding of the ball. Bursae in relation to the joint. Subscapular bursa, infraspinatus bursa, synovial sheath of long tendon of biceps brachii, and subacromial bursa. The relations are as follows. Above, coracoacromial arch, subacromial bursa, supraspinatus, and deltoid. Below, long head of triceps, axillary nerve, posterior circumflex humeral vessels. Anteriorly, subscapularis, subscapular bursa, coracobrachialis, short head of biceps brachii, and deltoid. Posteriorly, infraspinatus, teres minor, and deltoid. Movements of the joint. Flexion. Ventral movement of the arm in a sagittal plane. Extension. Dorsal movement of the arm in a sagittal plane. Abduction. Movement of the arm away from the midline in a coronal plane. Adduction. Movement of the arm towards the midline in a coronal plane. External rotation. Rotation of the arm around its longitudinal axis such that the anterior surface of the humerus turns laterally. Internal rotation. Rotation of the arm around its longitudinal axis such that the anterior surface of the humerus turns medially. Circumduction. Moving the arm in a circular motion. Blood supply to the shoulder joint. The blood supply is by the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral vessels, suprascapular vessels, and subscapular vessels. Nerve supply, axillary nerve, suprascapular nerve, and the musculocutaneous nerve. Clinical correlation, subacromial bursitis, 
Subacromial bursitis is inflammation of the bursa and is often due to deposition of calcium within the supraspinatus tendon. It is seen more in middle-aged males. The patient typically experiences painful movement during abduction from 50 to 130 degrees. Dawbarn sign. Pressure over the deltoid below the acromion with the arm hanging by the sides causes pain. However, when the arm is abducted, pressure over the same point causes no pain. This is because the bursa disappears under the acromion. Popoid deformity. Osteoarthritic changes in the glenohumeral joint or chronic tendinitis may cause a rupture of the long head of the biceps tendon. Alternatively, the tendon may be avulsed from the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. The detached muscle belly contracts into a ball in the anterior arm on attempted elbow flexion. Paralysis of trapezius the trapezius is the only muscle that can elevate the shoulder. Its paralysis from a lesion of the spinal accessory nerve or a stroke causes a drooping shoulder and an inability to shrug. Inferior subluxation of the head of the humerus is common following the paralysis of the trapezius due to the drooping shoulder. Painful arc syndrome. It is characterized by chronic thickening of the tendon of the supraspinatus in which pain is experienced between 60 to 120 degrees of abduction due to the impingement of the tendon against the coracoacromial arch. Frozen shoulder. Complete absence of movement at the shoulder joint due to tendinitis of the rotator cuff muscles. The etiology is unknown and the patient recovers spontaneously within 6 to 12 months. Shoulder dislocation. The glenohumeral joint is the most frequently dislocated large joint. An inferior dislocation is the most common type due to the muscle traction pulling the humeral head into a subcoracoid position. Posterior dislocations comprise only 5% but are seen following convulsions or electric shock. The axillary nerve might be damaged during a dislocation due to its close proximity with the surgical neck of the humerus.